Hi, SCBC. I hope you're doing well. Uh, well, spring is in the air. Uh, we're finally wrapping up winter and looking toward summer. Uh, this week is kind of that transition week. Uh, the spring break, kids are out of school. Some of you will be traveling, maybe visiting family, going on a vacation, uh, Easter dinner on Sunday. And uh, this can be a busy time of year for us. And uh, like all holidays, especially Christian holidays, it's important for us to just pause for a moment and remember what it is that we are reflecting upon, what it is we are celebrating. Uh, you know, there are many people today who will di seek to diagnose the problems of our world. Some will say, well, it's social media causing a great deal of disunity and problems in society. Some would say it's political leadership. Uh, others would say it's the economy, it's war, uh, all sorts of things uh, that people might point to. Uh, but you know, the Bible tells us that there's something much deeper. There's a deeper root problem from which all of these other things spring. And that problem is the problem of sin, or more specifically, we could say righteousness or the lack of it. Uh, in Romans chapter 3, we read that there is none righteous, not even one. There is none who does good. Uh, that term righteousness simply means moral perfection. And, and that is ultimately what is required of us if we are to have fellowship with God, if we are to be restored uh, to our Creator, and, and if we are to have things put right again, as it were, we, we need righteousness. Uh, the problem is, of course, as, as I just said, there, there is none righteous. There, there is none who does good. And that verse speaks of both action or behavior and condition. You see, we're not only sinners, uh, or we're not merely sinners because we sin, but, but rather we sin because we are sinners. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Apostle Paul says that he, speaking of God, made him who knew no sin, that's Jesus, to be sin for us so that in him we might be made the righteousness of God. So God has done something about our righteousness problem. Uh, we don't have it. Again, we, we have no way to obtain it. We can't be good enough. We can't meet that standard. But God has done for us what we could not do for ourselves. Later in Romans 3, he says, But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law and the prophets, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. And what he's saying there is that there is a righteousness available to us, but it doesn't come from us. It's the righteousness of God. God offers His righteousness to us. But how do we obtain this righteousness? What do we do? Is it, is it by good works? Is it by penance? Is it by uh, merit? On what basis do we obtain this righteousness? Well, he tells us, he says, this righteousness comes through faith in Jesus Christ. So it's faith. What is faith? Faith is simply trusting. It's putting your full faith and trust in someone or something. And that's what it means. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. But, but what specifically are we putting our trust in, in, in when, it, when we speak of putting your trust in Jesus? Well, Paul tells us that, it, it, that Jesus Christ was put forward, God put forward Jesus as a propitiation for our sins by His blood. That word propitiation is, is kind of a, a, a strange word to us. It's not something we use in our modern vernacular, but the word simply means this. It means an offering which turns away the wrath of God. And so we see this, for example, in the Passover when, when the children of Israel were told to uh, kill a lamb and put its blood on the doorpost and the lentils of the house. Uh, and, and that sacrifice, which was represented by the blood on the door, meant that when the wrath of God would come in the form of the, the angel of death who would slay the firstborn, that, that, that God would come to that house, He would see that judgment had already come on a sacrifice, and He would pass over that household, and the firstborn would be spared. That's a, in, in many ways, that's a form or a picture of propitiation. In fact, Paul speaks of Jesus as our Passover lamb who was sacrificed. And so God has put Jesus forward as the propitiation by His, His blood, which was shed for us on the cross. So when we look at Good Friday and we see Jesus there on the cross, what we are seeing is, is the Son of God standing in our place, in our stead, to bear our sins in Himself and to take the punishment and the penalty for our sins upon Himself so that we might be forgiven. That's what it means in 2 Corinthians 5, that God made Him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin. He took our sin upon Himself, and He did that for us, and so He was punished for our sins. And, and there's this exchange which takes place, and this exchange is that, that those who come to God by faith in Jesus Christ, trusting in what Jesus did on that cross, then there's an exchange made where my sin is counted 
as paid. The penalty is paid because my sin was put upon Jesus who suffered in my place. As Isaiah said, the chastisement that brought us peace fell on him. And then God takes his righteousness, the righteousness of Christ, that perfect life which he lived, and that is credited to my account, as it were, according to Romans chapter 4 and the example of Abraham. And so God looks at me as though I lived the perfect and righteous life of Jesus. Though I did not, he counts that to me, he credits that to me, and he does that because he counts my sinful life as having been born by Jesus. And so when I come to faith, trusting in him, and not my own good works, but trusting in the works of Jesus on my behalf, and trusting in his death as the payment for my sin, the Bible says that I am saved, I am made righteous. And, and of course, then uh, we celebrate Easter Sunday, uh, three days later, where uh, we remember this, the, the resurrection of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus is important because it vindicates Jesus, and the resurrection proves that, that Jesus is, in fact, the Son of God. It's one of the, the, the things that vindicates His righteousness, as it were. So, so the wages of sin is death, right? The penalty for sin is death, and if Jesus had have remained in the grave, all that would prove would, was that He was a good teacher. He did a lot of nice things, uh, but ultimately He was just like us. He just was an example for us to follow. But the Bible tells us that Jesus was raised from the grave, proving that the sins for which he died were not his own. They were our sins, your sin and my sin. And the, the scriptures paint this picture as though when Jesus rose from the grave, he, he put our sin to death. It's in the grave. And, and the Bible says that all who will come to God, trusting in what Jesus Christ did in his perfectly righteous life, in his sin-bearing death, bearing my sin and your sin, and then his resurrection, trusting that he is raised from, the, uh, raised from the dead and to life, then the Bible says we will be saved. We will be forgiven. We will be saved, born again, as Paul said, to a living hope. That's what Jesus himself said in John chapter 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Gave, that's, that's picture, picture propitiation there. He gave his only son that whoever would believe in him should not perish, should not die, eternally, but would have eternal life. And so that's what we remember. That's what we reflect upon and we celebrate this weekend. Uh, that The God of the universe loved us so much that He was not willing that we should perish, but that He sent His Son, God in flesh. He, it wasn't that He sent someone else. He came Himself to this earth to take upon Himself our sin and our shame and to die and to be raised again so that we might have life. I've said many times that all the religions of the world, most of them uh, have this, the, the same picture. It's, it's that God resides at the top of a great mountain and, and humanity is at the bottom. And, and we all kind of find our way, our path to God to reach Him. And, and, that, and so every religion ultimately is kind of the same, but that is not the picture that we see in Scripture. In fact, the Bible is unique from all the, the, the Christian religion is unique from all the other religions in the world in, in that it says this, that we cannot climb the path or climb the mountain to God. God must come to us, and that's in fact what He has done. He, he left heaven and He came down to us who were dead in our sins, and He gave us life, and He brings us to Himself. What a glorious and wonderful truth this is. And this is the truth that we celebrate this weekend. I want to encourage you, uh, as you go out into your communities this week, uh, as you have opportunity to have conversations, uh, share this, this hope, this good news. That's what the gospel means. It means good news. Share this with your friends, your neighbors. Uh, share it with your children. Uh, encourage your spouse and your, your, your family, extended family, with these wonderful truths. And we'd also encourage you to invite them. I invite them to services here this Sunday. Uh, our Good Friday service is uh, Friday night at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll gather together uh, at that time and celebrate the Lord's Supper. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to sing and reflect upon the death of our Savior, spend a little time in the Word, reflecting on the Gospel. And then we'll gather again on Sunday morning as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, it'll be a glorious time together as a church. Uh, we'll sing. Uh, we'll pray. We'll hear from the Word. We're going to hear some testimonies uh, of those uh, who have come to faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, it's just going to be a glorious time together. I'd encourage you uh, to be here and to invite your friends and family to come uh, and be a part of that celebration with you. Uh, well, I hope you have a, a great weekend. Uh, I pray it's blessed, and I pray that you are both encouraged and motivated uh, in your faith 
uh, by all the events of the weekend and the reflections and the celebrations around the death and resurrection of our Lord. So have a blessed day and we'll see you Friday and Sunday. Take care. Because the sin